Hello and welcome to the Nerd Cave Remote Technical Support video channel. My name is Jeffrey Cobb and today I'm going to familiarize you with the Windows File Explorer. Now, in this video I decided to start with a fresh desktop because I wanted to give you an idea what a desktop looks like when it is first created. There's no icons other than the recycle bin on this desktop and I like to add a couple of icons because I use them the most. And the way I do that is I right click the desktop, I go down to Personalize, and then I click themes over here on the left and scroll down and right here desktop icon settings I click that and then I turn on computer and user files move my recycle bin down here select these two icons drag them up here okay now the reason I like these two icons is well for starters the user icon gives me access to all the libraries in my user directory or actually these are folders they call it a library so if I have any documents stored they'll obviously be under documents uh, any downloads I get from the internet will be stored under downloads and if you use Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer then your favorites or your bookmarks will be stored under your favorites folder uh, there's also a lot of other folders here for things one of the things I want to note under documents is sometimes you'll install an application and it will automatically store files you create somewhere. More than likely it will create a folder under documents with the application name or at least the files associated with that particular application and you go into that folder and you'll find the files you've been creating. I've noticed that on a number of occasions when I've used an application I don't know where it's putting stuff I've found it under documents in its own subfolder. Now before I start moving along here, I wanted to explain a few terms. As you said, I've said subfolder and folder. Folders are just that. They're folders created on a drive. Now one of the reasons I like having the this PC icon is it gives me the preferred view that I like when I, when I open the file explorer. Up here are the more commonly accessed user folders. And down here are the storage devices currently available on my computer. If I plug in an external storage device like a flash drive or an external drive it will eventually show up here and I can access it and store information or access the information that's on it. This one is empty but most of the time these usually have something on them. To continue what I was talking about one of the things I wanted to discuss were what's called the path. If you go into a particular storage device you'll notice it's given a letter Windows is C, my data drive is D, I have a recovery drive that's E, and then the passport I just plugged in is F. If you go into one of these and then find a folder that you want to access like documents and then inside documents there are subfolders, I'll go into manuals, you'll see the path up here. Now if you click the address bar. You can actually type the path in manually. If I delete manuals it will move me up to documents. Let me go back into manuals though. But this right here, when you click it, this is the actual path of this particular subfolder. And the reason I want you to know this is because a lot of times you'll be using an application and you'll either need to load or save information. And if it saves it somewhere, you'll probably see something like this and this gives you an idea of where the file is going to be on your computer. You'll see the drive letter D and then the first folder is documents and then inside that is another folder called manuals. And when I click outside the address bar it gives me this button view of the address bar which is pretty handy because from here I can go wherever I want to. I can go all the way back to this PC or I can just go right into documents. So that makes it pretty easy to navigate your file system using that button bar. One of the other things I want to talk about real quick are these navigation arrows. If you click this down arrow, it will obviously show you some of the places you've been to recently. Uh, clicking the back button will take you back to the place you just were. Clicking the forward arrow, will, it's basically like the history in a browser. It'll move you forward through your navigation history and backward through your navigation history. Now what the up arrow does is move you to one directory up from where you currently are. Like I'm in manuals, I click the up arrow, it'll take me into documents. 
Okay, so now you have a basic understanding of what a path is and how to navigate a path. The other thing I want to show you is some of the things you can do to files. Most files have some kind of command associated with them. For example, this one, the still image. If I right click that, there's a myriad of things I can do with this. I can edit it. I can set it as the desktop background. I can print it. I can open it with uh, some default applications. Sometimes the application I want isn't available, so I can do open with and then choose an application. If the application I want isn't there, I can choose another app. The only downside to choosing another app is you usually have to navigate somewhere, more apps. Look for this app on another PC. If the one you want, you can't find, you have to do this. And then again, you get a kind of a mini file explorer and you can navigate your computer to where the application might be. But obviously you need to know how programs are installed on your computer in order to find those. I don't want to get into that now. It's a bit of a complex subject, but needless to say, applications are installed in a default directory on your computer. And if you can find that directory and you get familiar with it, then you can find applications and associate certain file types with any application you want. One commonly used feature, especially if you're using pictures, let's go into a picture directory here. Okay, let's say I want to store a few of these and send them in an email. Well, sometimes you can just send all the images one at a time through an email, just attach each file, and that works most times. But other times, maybe you have a myriad of files, and not all of them are images, maybe some of them are documents. Um, the first thing I want to point out is how to select things. Let's change the view. This is a good time to get into view. You can actually change the view of whatever directory you're in by selecting view and then picking one of these. I'm going to go to details. Now let's say I just want to send a, a city image, a computer image, and a shoreline image. So I'll send the first one. Now if I wanted to send all the city images, I could just click the first one I want, hold the shift key, click the last one I want, and Windows will select everything from the first to the last for you. But in this case, I just want to select city, then I'll hold the control key, and then do computer and shoreline. Release the control key, and the files I want are selected. Now if I right click this, I can do send to, compress zip folder. It'll give me the option to name it. I'm just going to call it compressed file. And now all the files I just selected are stored in a compressed file and I can email that file to somebody and as long as they know how to decompress the file they'll have access to all those files. If I double click the compressed file it will show me the contents. I can even preview them if I want by double clicking an image. As long as there's an application associated with it, in this case Windows isn't sure what I want to use but it knows it's an image so you'll see it's only giving me image applications here. I'm just going to go ahead and use photos. I can preview the image ins inside the compressed file without having to decompress it. If I want to decompress this file, I can right click it and just do extract all. And it will give me the option to give it a name. I'll just call this photos. And then it creates a folder called photos and then opens it up for me and I can see the contents inside the new photos directory I just created. I'm going to delete those, right click photos and then go down to delete. When I hit delete it will move it to the trash. And From the trash I can restore that folder if I want by right clicking it and hit restore. Or I can drag it wherever I want. I could drag it out to the desktop and move it there if I like. Now I also want to quickly cover the uh, sidebar. This isn't something I use too often. I mean I use it just not as often as other people. I've seen other people who are just addicted to the sidebar because they like to uh, like for example click this little arrow here. Well that would be the wrong example. Let's go down to data and then documents. And those little, when you click those little arrows and they point down they expand what's inside that particular folder. This is called a tree view because it's, it basically shows the folders almost like branches. And you can access 
the files just by clicking the directory over here. You can do the same thing with your drive too, obviously. You can click the passport drive. One other thing I like about this is let's go to uh, this PC, go to data. Let's say there are some files I want access to in a commonly accessed directory like docs, for example. I can right click the folder docs and then click pin to quick access. Close this, go up to the quick access section and there's docs. So no matter where I'm at, if I just click docs, it'll take me straight there and I can work with those files. I'm going to unpin this by right clicking it and then clicking unpin because I actually don't use that folder very much. Now one other thing I want to get into is moving files around on your computer. Now probably the most common way is to select the file you want or multi-select files if you like. If you multi-select make sure you always right click at least one that's selected and then I'm going to cut these images and cut basically is telling the computer you want to move those files somewhere else. So now I'm going to go over here to um, let's get out of this, let's go to the passport. I want to create a new directory to store these files in. So I'm going to right click this window and then go down to new folder. I'm going to call this pics. Go in there and then right click it and hit paste. So now I've just moved those files from where they were and my other backgrounds directory to the pix directory on drive F. And there's the path F colon slash pix. Now up here there's a little down arrow that allow you to add buttons to your toolbar. Usually undo isn't available. I like to make that one available because if I don't like the action I just did I can hit the undo button and it'll move those images back to the backgrounds directory I just copied them from. Now aside from being able to move images naturally you can copy them by selecting the images you want clicking right or right clicking and then clicking copy and it'll do the same action except instead of moving them it will just make a copy another way of moving files around is to use two windows so as long as I have this window open and I have it focused and focused means that the that, that window currently has your attention you've clicked on it at least once with your mouse I can press control N and it'll open a duplicate window and I can take that window and navigate to where I want the files to go and I can make a quick copy of images by selecting the ones that I want and dragging them over okay so I now have a copy of City 2 and City 0. Now the thing I want to mention here is when you drag files from one drive, for example this is D drive, to another drive, and this is F drive, it will always make a copy. Let me delete these. If you want to move them, you select the files you want, and then you do a right click drag. Instead of holding down your primary mouse button or left mouse button for most people, you hold down your right mouse button and you drag that over and then you release it and it will give you the option what you want to do. In this case I want to do move here and it'll move those files from here to here. I'm going to undo that action because I want to keep my backgrounds under backgrounds. But that is something I use quite often is the right click drag. For example if I want to look at this picture or access this file. It can be any file. It can be a Word document or anything. If I right click and drag it out onto my desktop, oops, right click, okay, hold down the right mouse button, drag it out, let it go. I can click create shortcut here and that doesn't actually copy or move the file. It just creates a link to the file. So I'm not using up really any more disk drive space by creating a shortcut, I'm just making it easier to access that file. Some other right click features on files is properties. You can look at specific details for a file. Like if I right click and open properties for city zero, if I go to details, 
If I can get some more specifics about the file, like it's 1920 by 1080 pixels, I can see where it's located, what kind of file it is, when it was created, how big it is. There's a lot of information in here which is beyond the scope of this particular video. Now, one other thing I'm going to cover, and you may not necessarily need this particular feature, but something I do quite often is I'll click File and go to Change, Folder, and Search Options. And something I do is under the Search tab in this window, or excuse me, under the View tab in this window, I'll show hidden files and folders. Because there are some files Windows will hide from you just because it really isn't practical to show them to you. But I turn that feature on, and if I go to, let's say, my user directory, let's open that up. There's a number of folders which you don't normally see, like App Data, Microsoft Edge Backup, and user or ntuser.dat. That's a configuration file, and this is a, a where a lot of configuration information and in, uh, all kinds of application information is stored under App Data. That's actually a pretty important folder. That's why I like to have access to it because I go in there a lot in order to make changes to things. But uh, for the most part, if you're just beginning, you probably won't need access to that. But that is how you can view those kinds of files is to turn on that option. I'm going to turn it off now. Go back to view. Don't show hidden files and folders. And now they're invisible. So if you need to get access to a particular folder or subfolder on your computer which you can't seem to find odds are it might be hidden that's just a trick you can use in order to see those there's a handy little feature in here under the view tab let's say you, know, you like using medium icons just to get an idea of what your images are it would be nice if you had something bigger this doesn't really work for you you can turn on preview pane and then when you select a file you get a much larger preview of the image you want to work with. This is particularly handy for images. I believe it also works for documents. I just have to wait a moment because it actually has to load the application library for that particular file type. And there's my document preview. And that's that's pretty handy if you just want to quickly go over files if you're looking for something specific. Now not every file is going to have something associated with it. Sometimes you'll click on something and you just you can't it just doesn't have an application associated with it for example this one there's no preview available for it. I don't more often than not I don't use it and I like uh, to see more detailed information if I need preview I'll turn it on. Search is really handy. I have used search before I can look for um, any particular kind of document perhaps let's say I want to look for images that are JPEGs the asterisk means all files dot jpg. Oops, no, let me go lowercase. Now it's going to search the entire D drive and find any jpg files it can. I'm going to go ahead and stop this search because it's taking long enough. But when you click the X on the search, it will it will cancel the search and give you back to your default view. Um, let's do uh, let's go inside a particular folder and just do search for text documents. And it will only search the folder you're in for stuff. And it only shows you the files you look for. So that's a wildcard. There's a lot you can do with wildcards. Um, like for example, if I just wanted IRS data, um, I could just type IRS star. And it will show, show me everything that uh, says IRS and then star is basically a wildcard or anything after IRS. Um, let's see if I have a doc file. No. Text file? No. There's more you can do with wildcards. I believe question mark is one, for example. Question mark basically allows you to replace any character. So if, it, if you don't know what a letter is, you can use a question mark in order to fill that in. I think I could do question mark FF. And it will do the same thing. 
Search is pretty handy if you want to look for specific files in a directory or drive that you're currently in. Uh, Cortana is good for looking for programs that are installed on your computer. It doesn't really find documents. I mean, you, you can look for documents, but it takes much longer because it searches your entire computer system. I'm not even sure where, how far out it goes. It might even go out to the internet, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Okay, so that's basically everything I wanted to cover on the File Explorer. Uh, I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like this video, make sure you like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. Make sure you check out our website, www.the-nerdcave.com, and give us a call if you need any services, technical support, or web development or program development. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.